Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com and tonight we're going to take a picture of the planet Saturn through my biggest telescope. The ringed planet is about a month past opposition which means it will be out almost all night long. I'll have plenty of time to find it, point my telescope at it, and record videos of it to create an epic picture. The process of capturing planets is a bit different than regular astrophotography and I'll share my entire process with you from start to finish. Right now is a great time to look at Saturn. Even though it was at opposition, or directly opposite the Sun on September 8th, it's still very big and bright right now. Saturn's rings tilt over time, over a 15 year period to be exact. This is what it looked like back in 2019, and here is what it's projected to look like now. By March of next year, these rings will be edge on. I've never captured Saturn's rings at this angle before, so I'm really excited to see how it turns out. When it comes to solar system photography, the bigger the telescope, the better. I don't just mean the magnification either. I'm talking aperture, the diameter of the telescope. That's what makes the biggest difference. More aperture means more light and more details on the planet. For that reason, I've chosen to use my enormous 14 inch tracking Dobsonian reflector telescope. The primary mirror is over a foot wide and it will bounce an epic image of the planet Saturn into the eyepiece. This telescope is a bit different than a regular manual Dobsonian reflector. It has the ability to track the motion of the planets in the night sky, which is a huge help when you have a camera attached. Because our night sky appears to slowly move throughout the night, this tracking telescope will keep me locked on target. You could use the same process I'm using tonight with a manual Dobsonian telescope, but you'll have to manually move it to follow Saturn throughout the night. And the more magnification you have, the faster it will be moving. The design of this telescope means that the primary mirror will soak up all of the light from Saturn and concentrate it back up to the secondary mirror and into the eyepiece. While I could just enjoy the view with my eyes, instead I'm going to place a sensitive planetary astronomy camera into the eyepiece. A camera will allow me to adjust settings like brightness and frame rate and I can ensure that my focus is dialed in in real time. Even if I wasn't recording a video, it's a fun way to view objects in space in real time on a larger screen. The camera I'm using is a ZWO ASI 585MC. It can record full color videos at a frame rate of about 50 frames per second. I'll get back to why that's important in a second. Rudy, what are you doing? A friendly subscriber of the channel sent me this shroud for my daub, which should increase contrast in the scope. It's something uh, I always wanted to get since the scope arrived. Under here is the truss tube, so it was wide open before, but now it's blacked out with the shroud. So. That should make a difference. The native magnification of this telescope or focal length is 1350 millimeters. While that's pretty deep already, I'll double the reach using a simple Barlow lens. This will bring Saturn in even closer to pretty well the perfect size to fill the frame of the camera. Now, the tricky part is capturing a video during times of good seeing and transparency. We're looking through a lot of atmosphere and turbulence in the air here on Earth, so I'll have to wait patiently for a time when that settles down. I'll control the camera using a software called Fire Capture. It's a simple tool that lets you run the camera, control the settings, and see a live view through your telescope. One of the key settings is frame rate, and the faster the frame rate, the better. A faster frame rate captures every brief moment of good transparency as it fluctuates in and out. You can actually see Saturn get blurry and then sharp again throughout the night as you watch it. By capturing more frames overall, you increase your chances of getting good ones when the air was still. So now that you know the general process, it's time to get set up and get my telescope pointed towards the planet Saturn. My goal is to capture four or five one minute long videos of the planet when the air is nice and still and my telescope is in crisp focus. Then I'll watch the videos and extract the best single frames out of those videos. So this is what it looks like in fire capture. That is Saturn there, slightly out of focus. I can adjust that. But really to get that tuned in, we need to change the settings and zoom in quite a bit. So this is the max resolution. As far as planetary cameras go, it's a large sensor and it's a very horizontal format. 
but if we put Saturn in the top left, which I can do using the SynScan app for this daub, that's what I use instead of the hand controller. I'll move Saturn, so it's just moving the telescope ever so slightly, because we're really zoomed in here. Kind of a balancing act. Let's get it over here. I put it in that top left corner there, and then I'm going to use something called the ROI mode, or region of interest. If I click that, now we have this much smaller box, and I can zoom in here. And now we just need to center Saturn in this box. And now, then we can really fine tune things here. Uh, about center. Yeah. Uh, looks pretty good. Great. Okay. Now I can adjust the focus. That's a little bit better, a slight turn. And I have the exposure cranked here because I was just kind of trying to find it. So why don't I bump the exposure down and the gain down. That's better. There, if we zoom in here, now when I make adjustments to the focus, you can really see you can start to see, anyway, the planet in a much better view. Look at that. We can see Saturn's rings crossing over the disk, and we're pretty close to a really nice focus here. So I can zoom out a little bit, and why don't I just center this a little bit better? That's pretty close to center, I would say. And then we can use this tool here, the auto align. Click that and it will kind of hold it steady. And then from here, you want to look at your histogram, so the blue, green, red channels. And by adjusting the gain and exposure, you'll see those change. You don't want to be clipping any of the highlights just as you would in a regular astrophotography image. And turn the exposure down just a little bit more. That looks good to me. And then so to record the video, I'm going to press the play button here. And so it's going to keep recording this live video of Saturn. And in this section here, you can see the frames, how many frames we've captured. We're already over a thousand frames, uh, even though it's a 15 second video so far and we're almost at a gigabyte. We're half a gigabyte already. The frames per second is at 102, which I'm really not sure how that's happening, considering this is a 50 frame per second camera. I'll have to look into that one, but that's a good thing. So what I'm trying to do here is basically get about 10,000 frames, and then uh, I'm kind of watching here to see if we get some good areas of transparency, and then I can look back at the video and, and isolate those really good moments of good transparency. To help me with the processing, I met up with Mark from the Refreshing Views YouTube channel. He has a lot of experience with planetary astrophotography, and he shared some great strategies with me to help me process my latest picture of Saturn. Here's a portion of our session where he shows me the exact settings that he uses in AutoStacker and Registax. For anyone that wants to see this session in its entirety, I've posted the full one hour long version on my Patreon. Are you using your region of interest? Yes, so yes. very small one, 400 by 400 pixels. So I'm looking at your histogram as well on the left-hand screen. So I try and get mine at around sort of two thirds, my histogram. So I'm a little dim um, here then. Yeah, so you still have the same signal, but it's all compressed to the left, if you get what I mean. But about half, two thirds is what I go for. So what I would suggest, so looking at the right-hand window first, you're on planet, aren't you? Yep. Uh, a button on the left-hand side, that is your sort of minimum darkness. Yeah, so get that down to about five. Oh, wow. And that means anything above the background will, will, will appear. I go for 48, so I click on 48. Okay. 
And then is if you've got multi-scale ticked? A multi-scale is ticked. Perfect. So yes. So I'll tell you what, now before we do that, click on analyze. And this is when we go and make a cup of tea. Now this will take a few minutes to come through. So what it's going to do now, it's going to inspect your video, all 30,000 frames of them. So it might take a few uh, a few minutes to do this. So the gray line is if the, you know, the, the order it was captured in, you know, with respect to time with, with the frames. So the scene was good and it was bad and the scene was good and it was bad. And what it's done is it's now sorted them out into sharpness, the quality of them. So you can therefore move your mouse up and down that horizontal line and you can sort of make a judgment where where you want to sort of cut your, cut your line off. So based on this graph, you would say, because these are 25% each, around 20 would be the kind of the safe spot where I'm not stacking the really poor yeah. frames. Okay. And this is this constant trade-off you have between you want to capture sharp frames, but to process them, you need to have a good signal to noise ratio. So you want as many sharp frames as you could. So just do a thousand for the time being. Okay. Um, now, the other thing that's very important, at the bottom right, you've got drizzle. Drizzle will interpolate between the pixels. Okay, so the one and a half times drizzle, we're gonna stack yep. a thousand frames. So we're 85% done. And then, so I'll be opening up this image in Registax. Is that the next step? Yes, yes okay. that's great. So I will open up our stack that we just did. F1000, that's it. Yeah, so if you'd add more of those, they all appear under under the folder with the F1, yeah, whatever you've done, if it was 25% or a 1,000 frames, they all appear in their folder. Right. And then open that up. And the first question I have, stretch intensity levels? Do I want to? No. no? Yeah. Get rid of that. Just, oh, okay. Now, this is where the magic has happened. So what you did, you have 30,000 frames? Yes. So you just rejected after all your hard work, setting your telescope up, doing your capture, you have just rejected, rejected 29,000 of them. They're, 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 these are only the best ones. Yes. So on the left-hand side, you, you have a whole load of sliders um, to choose from. And the, the ones at the top, the, the big one, channel number one or layer number one, layer number one, that's your big coarse features. And layer number six, that's all your fine features. And obviously it's graduated in below. So it's a whole load of unsharp masks okay. of varying radius. So I, the simplest way to do this is just above where your mouse is, it says use linked wavelets. Okay. Click on that. Okay, now slide layer number one, level number one, all the way to the right. Okay, and then it has to think. Now you've got a sharper image, but it now looks quite grainy. You, you've obviously boosted the noise. Mm -hmm. So on the left-hand side, it says denoise. Mm -hmm. I don't know, bump it up to 0 0.3 or something like that. This will give the softer image. It will get rid of all that, um, you know, horrible sort of, sort of graininess. So it now looks a bit smooth. Now let's go into the sharpen. I don't know. Let's go to say, I don't know, point, point 0.2. And we're just iterating back and forth here. We're at point 0.2 now. Okay. There you are. You see, it's starting to come in now. You can tailor this depending on your image scale and all that sort of thing. You can boost the boost the sharpening mm -hmm. and then you can boost the noise. And it really is, you know, it's a bit, bit more, you know, until you do it. So that to me, Looks, you know, it looks quite pleasing. I'd be pleased if I had that image. On the right hand side is all your sort of image, um, sort of presentation controls. So the next one we need is uh, RGB balance. Okay. And then if you move, yeah, move that out of the way. Now you can see there you've got different, you've got your red, green, blue, but they're all misaligned slightly. So hit auto, uh, the auto button, the, the align button. Okay. Yep. Auto balance. That's made a nice, nicer, nicer picture. Now you said you didn't shoot with an atmospheric dispersion corrector, so there is a way to correct for this in the software, which is your um, red blue align. Okay. Uh, yep. Okay. I'll move him to the side right. So you've got a green square right in the center. Mm -hmm. If you grab the corners of the green square, drag it so that it fills up Saturn. Oh, the whole thing. Wait, yep, and all the way down there. Yeah, I try and make sure yeah, you got the whole thing in. Okay. And then click on the button to estimates. 
And it's now down at your bottom left, you've got a little progress bar. And now it's checking mm. the red, then it'll check the blue. And it will now then the pixels, a few pixels either way, when that is complete. Oh, wow. That works well. <laughs> 